Jay. Spent my ten on my fit. Act slick, then he with the back then. You some out of zip. Blind as back then. Dip. Got a whole whole party all on the ship. All these four things pull out the vip. Can Zeke dink again? It's a coach. This is Madden football on EA Sports. Coming up, Ezekiel Elliott. Fresh off 100 yards a week ago, as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Dallas Cowboys. I'll see you again at halftime as we preview some of the action coming up on Sunday. But for now, it's Thursday night football. And on the call, as always, it's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and the very mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Obviously, they do everything big here in Dallas, and the introduction to the Cowboys, no exception. They're set for football in Big D, as their guys will do battle with Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm Brandon Gordon. As always, by my side is Charles Davis. So the final tune-up for the regular season and probably not going to really see much starter action out here in this one, are we? You're right. Not much in the way of starters, key veterans, key backups. But the guys who have to make the team struggling for those few spots that are open, we'll see them the entire time. But you and I both know this as well. There will be a surprise cutter, too from guys who didn't actually play in this game tonight thinking that they were safe. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. The Cowboys take the field, and the man leading them, Dak Prescott, who's been remarkably consistent through his first three NFL seasons. 23, 22, and 22 touchdown passes as he put together a 32 and 16 regular season record in those three years at the helm. He's going to take a shot right away. It's caught inside the 25. A huge play there right off the bat. 53 yards. That's a big time pitch and catch right there. Partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one-on-one -on -one and the ball's in the air like that. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Here's Prescott. Gates has it over the middle. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Well, he did everything but get him in the end zone there, but now they're set up. Golden opportunity, strong opening drive, and they're knocking on the door. And the way that they did it, now look where they are on the field, all right? This is naturally set up for a running play, isn't it? But with his ability to throw the football, his accuracy on this drive, you might want to think about a pass play in this situation. Mm, interesting. Time to find out. One man in the backfield, that's Elliott on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. 
Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. So it'll remain to be seen how many drives this unit gets in, this being the preseason, but here they start with three points. Yeah, I don't know that we'll actually see them anymore. They got three points on the board, one drive here in preseason in this game. Baseball caps, NFL approved, of course, for everyone. This will be fielded at the eight. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They're led out by a man raised in Alabama, went to Florida State. It's their quarterback, Jameis Winston. No question at all about his talent, and that's been on display since his first game as a starter at Florida State. On a Monday night, the whole country watching, he only missed two passes in the entire game and led his team to a big victory and later a national championship as a freshman. Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at about the 32. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front, so when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. He was out there waving his arms, and when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is, because you got to get his attention, because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found the right spot for the completion. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce. Didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. The starting 11 defensively for Tampa Bay. And Dominican Sue was an all-pro when he was with the Detroit Lions in 2013, 2014. Many people think that maybe he might either be slowing down or not playing at the same level. My eyes tell me he's still playing at an elite level, still destroying the interior of an offense, can get to the quarterback, crush a run game, you name it, Adama can see can do it, and how about how durable he is? Hasn't missed a game since 2011. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route, the drag, and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or... Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into it. Oh, Elliott going to be hit. He coughs it up, loose football, and it's picked up by the Buccaneers, and they will take over at the 26-yard line. No coach or team's ever happy when someone has a turnover, but if there's ever a good time to do it, preseason. <laughs> yeah, right now. You know that in come regular season, he's going to be ready to go, and maybe he'll remember, yeah, I don't want to do this when it comes time for the games to count. So out come the Bucks now. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. Okay, and and typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. Yeah. 
So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves job that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Three Back yards defense. on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Jameis to throw it. And he slings one that's incomplete. The intended receiver, Andre Ellington. And it's third down. And a look at the defense for the Cowboys. Sean Lee's one of my favorite players, and I don't mind saying it because I love his versatility. I can move him inside at the linebacker position. I can move him outside. I can rush him off the edge, rush him up the middle. He can drop into pass coverage. In fact, his versatility was on display even in his high school days where he was a big-time high school basketball player that had a chance to play in college as well. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Winston. Complete, he finds Bray. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route, it's extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, Tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. Andre Ellington, his first carry. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Leighton Vander Esch, third in the NFL in tackles as a rookie last year there on the stop. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Throwing on second down, Winston. And this one's incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time. And that'll make it third down. That was a nice grab. Just couldn't get the feet down, right? He needed that toe tap sequence there. Whatever size shoe he's wearing, probably need about a half size smaller to complete that one. Flushed out right. Airing this one up. Going for Evans, but that pass is intercepted. Picked off Byron Jones. Okay, it's real simple to say from here, but we know that sometimes as a quarterback, you've got to know when to say when and just throw it away. Flushed out to the right, tries to make something out of nothing here, and he winds up floating one downfield. that gets intercepted. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and, try and think. And that's caught inside the 30. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. Pretty good timing. He waited just enough for that post play to develop and laid it right in there. And you know what a lot of teams do when they decide to throw a post route? Because it's a little bit longer developing play. They max protect. Bring everyone in, keep the tight end in, an extra back to make sure the quarterback has time to deliver the football. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. Again to Elliott. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Second and five now. Prescott. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. 
I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays right after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Extra point by Moore, up and good. And the lead grows to 10 0. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it culminates in a Dallas touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. On the ground, it's Barber to start the drive. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Big stop, G. Big stop. Let's go. The first throw for the backup, Griffin. And break, the tight end's got it. The reception good for seven. It's third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. On the ground, Ellington. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And finally brought down at the 43. That good for 19 and a first down. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here's Ellington. And this time they're able to bottle him up as he'll stop him at the line of scrimmage. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. Let's hope it's not anything that'll keep him out of the opener. We'll be right back. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. I'm going for that now. The give is to Jones. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And it'll be a third and about 13. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they're dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they're bringing your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Out of the pistol to give to Jones. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. The loss of a full three yards. And now it's second down. Up front, the struggles continue for this offense among the line. What can they do? Change the play calling? What? I think part of that, yes. Changing some of the play calls. Some screens. Some draws. Some misdirection. You want to run any type of a play that will end. Now look out. Griffin hit. And he lost the football. It's loose. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes these quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence, 
that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some Dutch. Yeah, especially maybe you want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. Football 101, you've got to let the guy catch the ball. You have to know the ball is there. You have to know it's arrived. Otherwise, you're going to get flagged every time. So first and ten after a big mistake on fourth down with a penalty. They run the counter. Morris. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time he hand the ball to a back. And now the first throw for the backup quarterback. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Set 18, Gator. No chance. Keep it. Keep it. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Only one way to describe Ronald Jones' rookie season with Tampa Bay, and that's disappointing. Drafted to be their lead runner, just 23 carries on a team that ranked 29th in the NFL in rushing. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, to me, that's taking a big gamble defensively because that alignment you see, that's normally something you see down near the goal line because now if they decide to go play action, something should be open there, and I think open big. So maybe that's something hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. 47 yards on the punt that time. Just one yard on the return. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. Yeah, they have had success on the ground, really as a team, doing well carrying the football. So maybe a little less pressure on his shoulders as the quarterback. Any pressure he's carrying right now, that's self-inflicted, right? He's taking it on. He doesn't need to. Continue to do what you just said. Let everyone else carry the football. That's been effective. Don't have to worry about him throwing the ball in all the situations now. That's got to be a good feeling if he just relaxes and lets it keep coming to him. Yeah, and relax and enjoy the second quarter lead right now. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. It didn't amount to much. And, now, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by M.J. Stewart. And they will finally get to him, but a great return has set him up. First and goal at the five. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score?
And this offense trotting back onto the field. Let's turn our attention here to Ronald Jones. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well? or do you? And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Bucs are able to make this a close game again. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that'll cut it to three at 10-7. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. I'm sure he wanted to have a huge game, wants to have a huge game as the quarterback, but really on the ground they've been very very hard to stop maybe you just keep going to that well i think so and isn't it funny how the definition of balance changes for us from game to game sometimes it's like 50 50 run it throw it sometimes it's just being a balanced running team in terms of who's carrying yeah, the football more than one guy right multiple guys out there and now your guy back there has to throw it they don't have to worry about it quite as much and they've got the lead here in the second quarter Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. By the way, as we expected, most of the starting units out here in the second quarter. So get your two deep, your three deep, your four deep ready for this one. If you have a particular favorite who wasn't a high draft pick or is an undrafted free agent trying to make the team, this is the time to watch him play and give it his best shot because most of the starters, you're exactly right. They'll be out of the game watching the rest of the way. Hey, a sidebar worth noting is that preseason cuts have changed. So week three that we're in right now, the preseason, I think, what did you say, the roster is going to stay at 90 instead of going down to 75 this year? That's exactly right, Brandon, because in the past, just what you said, this game here at the end of week three or game three, you would cut the roster down to 75 and play game four just like that. In this case now, though, they're going to be able to keep guys all the way through. So guys who would normally not have a chance to finish out the preseason, they'll get that chance now and get more opportunities to get on tape. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. As a general rule, offensive linemen like to know where their quarterback's going to be when he's setting up to throw the football. But sometimes they just have to get on the run, get on the move. He was able to do that on that play and picks up a first down with a nice throw. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Looking to throw again on second down. Griffin. And Great has it over the middle. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That one good for 26 and a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. This quarterback now, five of six, very accurate since taking over. And he's got his guys a first down. Flush to his right. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Griffin. This is caught. 
And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Nice gain of eight that time, but it's second and goal. Clock running. The Bucs try to go quickly and get set. They'll run it with Jones. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Ronald Jones as the first half is winding down. And the Bucs have taken the lead. So they're able to capture the lead here just before halftime. And not only that, they get the ball to start the second yeah, half. That's right. This is almost like basketball down the stretch, right, where you get the two-for-one situation where you try and get two shots to your opponent's one. In this situation, they got the touchdown. They'll get another shot at to start the second half. Could be a big turnaround. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is now 14 to 10. A drive that time of six plays. And it's Ronald Jones that polishes it off with a touchdown run. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Final 10 seconds of the half as they've got it first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Throwing on second and three. Rush. Right side catch. This is Gates. And getting this just shy of midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. So we are halfway through here in the final week of the preseason. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. In our game, the starters are long gone. But still some intrigue to see guys trying to make a late roster push as we get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is taken at his four. Oh, jumping over. <laughs> Fighting through, and he's got space. The 40, the 30, past the 20. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great play there. 96 yards. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. And you've used the phrase with me before, pressing the kicking game. What exactly does that mean? Because they did it there. It means focusing on it, all aspects of it, because it's the third part of the game, offense, defense, special teams. If you press the kicking game, create an advantage, make a big play, it often leads to victory. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that makes it a 21-10 game. A spectacular return of 96 yards. Great blocking in front of him on special teams as well as he takes it to the end zone. So let's try this again after the kick return TD. Here's yet another kickoff. The Cowboys offense now. They head out for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing. And try and get back to where you were to start the half. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. And that's why he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there. Need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Finds his target. It's Gates. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. They go play action here on first down. He's going deep for Brown. 
And incomplete. Crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. It's been a struggle for him accruing yards in this game, passing the football. So there he said, hey, I'm going to try to chuck it deep, but another incompletion. Has to be a little bit frustrating because of what you just described. It's been a struggle for him here in the second half, hoping for one big shot to get him out of the doldrums. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Now, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing. Get to the quarterback. Oftentimes, you can bypass him with a running play. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter... Here in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. The defense for the Cowboys getting set to go. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all. But you're exactly right. They are doing their job but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You, did, you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. that. Totally missed it. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse. And I believe they'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Grant, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that's going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. Now Griffin eluding the pressure right. He's got Evans. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. And on that play, he's able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. Now a first down carry by Jones. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They go play action. Griffin. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. He's going to look deep down the field. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off around the 27. And he'll take this back all the way up past the 45-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. They run again with Morris. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. 
not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Keep playing. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. On third down, Griffin. That's complete to Auclair, the tight end. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked so well, and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. We're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Well, his struggles continue. Open targets, and he keeps missing them. Pressing way too much. He may have... Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Bo Allen drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sass. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they, a dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fielded at the 33. It's a 49-yard punt, but subtract nine there for the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tempt to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And give him four yards there, it'll be second and six third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now to throw on second and six griffin escaping the pressure right and that is incomplete he couldn't hold on through the contact brings up second down you get a tight end like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment but here this one has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. 
to throw on third down. Griffin. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it, when you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough. Swing the tight end free downfield for the completion. Here's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Now flags fly in and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. Now they nab the rookie there for the five-yard penalty. So much going through his head. You know it just has to be, right? All of his assignments and realizing every game he plays, one of the better players in the league will be opposite him. Rush. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. On third down, Rush. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on here to punt it away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on in the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it was almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, there just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense, no game. Called fitting your gaps, right? I love it, you're exactly right. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. To throw on third down. Griffin flushed out right. And a catch right side by Evans. We got this. It's not a surprise when you read scouting reports and watch tape because you know he's a heck of a player. But he is so difficult to get down in the open field. They just want to get him the ball and let him do his thing. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. And on the ground they go with a running back. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all on your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. Jalen Smith, the Notre Dame man, in on the tackle. 
bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling. So they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellows up front in order to bring this one home. They'll try and run for him with Jones. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Brandon, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. So first and 10 now from the 30. Griffin now off the bootleg. They'll roll him out right. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. They rolled out of the pocket right, and I think he wanted a little something more out of that play. Obviously, instead, he just he hit a safety valve. It looked like two well-coached teams there, even though there was no yardage gain. Because the offensive guys, hey, they realized their quarterback was out of the pocket. All the receivers went to the right spots, tried to get in his sight line, tried to open themselves up. Just nowhere to go where they could gain yardage. How about the defensive guys, though? Did not lose leverage and kept their poise and made a really nice play. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards there and a first down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon. But with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, no doubt here in the fourth quarter, this is a huge defensive series. Hey, they can read the scoreboard. They realize if they give up a field goal here, this game might be out of reach. They understand the stakes and are playing accordingly. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Play action. It's Griffin rolling to his right. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked off by Anthony Brown. Well, I get what he was trying to do. He was moving to his right and trying to shift the coverage. But instead, he shifted the coverage also to the right and threw right into it for an interception. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have... ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. A gain of four on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Short play like that in this situation, this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. Here's Rush to throw. Gates with a grab. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Throwing here, Rush. 
And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Bo Allen in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. And that takes a start to have a good drive, quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. That would have been from way downtown. Pretty big roll of the dice, and he comes up a bit short. Yeah, you knew when you saw the holder setting up on the other side of the 50 <laughs> that this was going to be a long shot. But to me, there's really no loss here because you've shown confidence in him. Kicking it from a long distance, that'll pay dividends. And the miss, you can shake that one off. He wasn't likely to make it in the first place. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inches. Again, it's Jones. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now. As he'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. On, Line set. of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here we go, here we go. A give to Jones. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. This is Jones. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. Uh-oh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory, and they were really helped by their defense, forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot. Of, but now it's about taking the ball away taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from AT&T Stadium.